Hello? Yes? Lord Stadham, secretary speaking. Who? Oh, the editor. All right, I'll tell him. Hello, Guy. Hello, Piggy. Busy? Working on your father's dinner party. You think it was a court ball from all the trouble he's taking about it? I thought he was in here with you. He was. He went out. In a bad temper with you, too. Me and the rest of the world. By the way, here's a list of guests. Guy, if we keep it up much longer, I shall burst. I'm too proud of having you for a husband. Your father won't feel that way about it. He's got very definite ideas about the duties of a private secretary. <laughs> Marrying me isn't one of them. That's what you say, but not quite in those words. Oh, he's a beast. The only thing he cares for is his newspapers. Not because they're something he created, but because of the power they give him. But let's change the subject. All right. Change it again. All right. Well, I'm going shopping. You'll be into lunch. Uh, Gerard, three double five four five. Uh, yes, I suppose so. So will I, then. Cocktails at one o'clock, Mr. Kenyon. Uh, this, this is Lord Studholm's secretary. Very good, madam. I want to make some changes in those invitations. Let's have father lunches at his club. I thought you were going yes, out. that's it. I'm on my way. The front yes. door is through the hall, not through my study. And Her Serene Highness, not Her Royal Highness. All right. More changes? Yes, sir. It'd be more practical to change the printer. Oh, he's the one you've always employed? That's why he's grown careless changing. What about that list? Very well. Here it is, sir. Peggy. Yes? What about your little friend? Joan Holland. Yes. Is she coming? Yes. Good. Perhaps she can stay with you for a few days. She can help you with the preparations. Well, everything's in hand. It's only a small party, after all, Father. But a very important one for me, my dear. <laughs> very well. I'll, I'll ask her to stay if you like. But really, she wouldn't. Why make all this discussion as just as you please? Very well. I'll ask her to stay. Good, thanks. You see, Peggy, this party may be very important to me politically. The princess apparently resents my articles against the Corsovian loan. However, the old girl must be conciliated. Now, what about this list? Well, there's Herede Korn, Baron Chiach. I suppose he ought to be invited. I suppose so. Sir John Holland? Oh. Why? You can't ask Joan without her father. And the princess will be very impressed to find you know the Commissioner of Police socially. Oh, thanks. Who else? Adrian Chilliot and his wife. Must we have those awful people? Well, what's wrong with them? They're always quarrelling with each other. He's the most affected person I've ever seen. Well, he amuses me. Besides, two of his books have been banned already. Makes him a celebrity? A third-rate one, good enough for the princess. <laughs> and how had Vernon? Vernon? Won't he do? He, we, we need an odd man. He's attractive. Cross, Cross him off. Well. We'll ask the general. He'll do. But why should Grandfather be any better than... Because he's as big a bore as the princess, that's why. And I don't want Vernon invited. Another grey one, Miles? Yeah, dear, dear, dear. I wish I could get rid of them as easy as that. Well, you better go and attend to your other lodgers. You're not my man's servant now, you know. No, sir. I only wish I were, sir. Lord Studholm? The, the big newspaper proprietor. I recognized him directly. I saw him. Hmm. Well, you better show him in, Miles. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Lord Stadholm. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Uh, 
May I ask what you want? I'm going to tell you. Go on, then. About a year ago, you made the acquaintance of a young lady, Joan Holland. What of it? Miss Holland is a friend of my daughter's. I take a deep interest in her. In a purely paternal way, of course. Of course. My object in coming here is entirely on her account. What is the object? To recover any letters she may have been indiscreet enough to write you. This is very interesting. Are you acting as her agent? You may take it that I am. If you're a gentleman... No, I'm not. I used to be, but I couldn't afford the luxury. Oh, in that case, I must treat you as a man of business. I'm afraid so. If you'll show me those letters, I'll see how much they're worth. You're serious? Certainly. Here we are, six authentic human documents going for a song. Or for a few notes, I suppose. I suppose your wife has not seen these. You know, that's not a very intelligent question. But in the young lady's interests, it's vital it should be answered. Mm, then you may take it that she has not seen them. How much? Would fortunes be too much? A hundred pounds. Two hundred and you can have the lot. You're quite sure these are the lot? Oh, I suppose so. Because if you should find some others later, I might become very unpleasant. Good morning, Lord Stato. Goodbye. Poverty's brought you pretty low, my son. Still, two hundred quid. It's going to be a hot day, eh? Have the marmalade. It's all gone, sorry. No pig. Good for your figure. <laughs> More coffee instead. Sure. You'll be late at the yard, Mr. Commissioner. I know. Ramage will be waiting for me in my office. Looking reproachful over a pile of correspondence. I've never met him, have I? Oh, you will one of these days. He's a good man. Absolutely no sense of humour. Invaluable in our job. You must make a rotten policeman, Daddy. <laughs> no cheek, young woman. Otherwise, I'll have you run in. On what charge? Murder. Of the King's English. I shall produce that postcard you sent me from Devonshire as evidence. <laughs> when are you going to meet Piggy? For lunch. You will come, won't you? I'll come for your sake. Certainly not for Studholm. Poor darling, you don't like him, do you? I'm very fond of him. We're useful to each other. How do you find him? Oh, quite nice. He seems to like me, rather. Yeah, naturally. You won't encourage him, will you? Oh, Dad, you are ridiculous. Why, he's old enough to be my... Your father, I take it. Bless you, my child. I have one last request. When the silence of the grave has fallen upon your poor old dad, don't forget to... Daddy, you're not to say such things. Why? You dad, I doubt you. So there. Selene. <laughs> By the way, darling, you're not still seeing Howard Vernon, are you? Who? Vernon. No. Isn't he away or something? Is he? Yes, he is. So he was. I see. So you're not still seeing him? Dad, you are a good policeman after all. Talk about third degree. 
No, I'm not. It's just one of those things. Just one of those things. Good. You see, I asked you because his name cropped up the other day. You see, he's not very careful of his reputation. Or other people's. That's why I'm glad you're not seeing him. I'm glad you're glad. Anna. Anna. Yes, darling? Your pad and pencil, quickly. Quickly, before I lose the inspiration. Oh, yes, darling. The scent of the room drifted slowly upwards as she gave him a pear-shaped look. Significant vital almond blossom falling on guitar strings in small Italian towns came to his mind as he bent. What was that? Sordid, time-shattering comes, tap, 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 a knocking on the door. Must you come thundering on the door when I'm trying to work, Mary? I'm ready to go on, darling. It's no use now. The inspiration's gone. What's this? The new press cuttings? Yes, darling. I stuck them in the book this afternoon. The name of Adrian Chidget, author of Leprous Souls, was new to me, and therefore it was with some surprise that I discovered that he is responsible for a baker's dozen of similar Masterpieces. <laughs> Mr. Chidiot has talent. <laughs> but thank heaven, there is no compulsion for any sane person to read such drivel. It's always the same. Vicious attacks in all Studholm's papers. Darling, that's only the reviewer. I'm certain that Lord Studholm knew nothing about it, or else he... Or else he wouldn't invite us to his parties, I suppose. <laughs> that's where you're wrong. That man's malicious. He only asked us so as to make a fool of me before his guests. But this time he'll be disappointed. I won't go. That's right, dear. I wouldn't go if I were you. And since when have I taken to asking your advice? I will go. Don't need to please the princess. She'd be bitterly disappointed if I didn't. That new tie suits you, darling. Yes, perhaps it does. You know, I don't think Studholm himself is so much to blame for those notices as that creature of his, Guy Kenyon. Mr. Kenyon? I thought he was such a charming young man. Yes, you would think so. <laughs> Who opens all the letters that I write to Studholm? Kenyon. Who always answers the telephone when I ring Studholm up? Kenyon. That man sticks at nothing to prevent my seeing Studholm. Oh, but he seemed such a... Well, anyway, it's quite an honour to be asked to meet the princess. They tell me she's very informal outside her own country. Rather like a schoolgirl on the loose. Well, she'd better take care. I feel like going on the loose myself tonight. Adrian, dear. Yeah, why aren't you dressed? Oh, come on. Oh, Mary, Mary. <laughs> Miss Peggy Studholm on the phone, sir. Hello, Peggy, my dear. Oh, you must excuse me. I mean, my bath. Colour. Well, here we are, my dear. Grandfather, you old nuisance. Where have you been the last two days? I've tried to get you everywhere. What's that? I mean, Scotland, fishing. Fishing, I thought so. Well, now fish yourself out of that bath. I'll do the bath. I'll do nothing of the sort. What do you mean, you impotent young monkey? What for? Because you're dining here tonight. So get into your clothes and be here as quick as you can. Dining? Who? Where? Listen, Peggy, you, you can't be serious. Of course I'm serious. But look here, it can't be so important as all that. Is it anybody special coming? If you'd read your letters, you'd see. It's to meet the Princess Amelia of Kosova. Amelia of Kosova? I never heard of her. Are you sure? Huh? That's what I said. Princess Amelia. White tie and looks slippy. 
Look, Sleepy, look, Sleepy, what the devil do you mean? Look here. Oh, operator, operator! Hey! <laughs> Hang it! Hang it, fella! Hey. It sounds a good idea, then. You'd better give me the revolver, as you're not coming yourself. Here it is, Your Highness. Are you absolutely certain that Lord Stadholm is opposing our loan because he wants the oil concessions himself? Certain, Your Highness. I have the reports from B-24, who has been working for me in Fleet Street for the last six months. Also, the information of the Secretary yes, of... Yes, These details make my headache. So long as there is no doubt... Naturally, Stadholm has no idea Your Highness knows. That is our greatest asset. Kornilov says... Yes, of course. The whole thing is rather overwhelming. But don't be afraid, Baron. I shall know what to do. Dawson, Mrs. Monroe rang up to hear if her cigarette case has been returned. Have you got it back? No, sir. Have you spoken to the man you sold it to? No, sir. Now, don't take advantage of my indulgence. I agreed not to have you arrested, provided that case is returned. If it's not here tomorrow, I'll have you arrested as a common thief. I don't think you'll do that, sir. And why not? I might tell Mr. Monroe how his wife came to lose her cigarette case. You have that case here tomorrow. But you promised to stay until Monday. Why go tonight? What's the mystery, Joan? Well, there isn't any mystery. I haven't done anything to offend you, have I? Oh, darling, don't be absurd. Guy and I wanted you to be here, and we told Father the bad news about us being married. Evening, Joan. Evening, Peggy. I've just telephoned my father. He asked me to apologize for him. He's very busy and won't be able to come in time for dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. I expect the Pulitzer case is keeping him. He said he'd drop in later. Uh, Mr. Studholm's wanted on the telephone. Who wants me, Guy? I do, darling. <laughs> angry we are. I suppose you want to apologize for what happened this afternoon. Would it be accepted? No. Dear, dear, I am having a bad time. No worse than you deserve? I really believe you were shocked. I was disgusted. I'd heard that some old men were like that, but I didn't believe it. Old? How unkind. My father's taking me back with him tonight. I must try and persuade you to change your mind. Did you tell your father why you were running away in such a hurry? No. Lucky for you, I didn't. Mm. He wouldn't approve of his little girl having secret attachments, eh? Secret attachments? For you? Possibly not for me. But for an attractive fellow like Howard Vernon, he... How do you know about that? Does it matter anyone knowing? Not in the least. When will young women realize it's dangerous to write passionate love letters to married men? How did you get those? The poor fellow was hard up. I don't believe it. But yet here they are. Oh, no. I'm relying on these letters to succeed where my natural charm has failed. You swine. Well, after all, wouldn't it be better to be a little kind than upset the domestic apple cart? I suppose you mean to show them to my father if I refuse? Well, it was in my mind. Then do it. Go on, do it. Give them to him when he comes here tonight. Oh, so that's it. He believes in you, does he? Well, then we won't waste time on him. But supposing Mrs. Vernon hasn't the same touching belief in her husband? I don't see what that has to do with it. Supposing I give these letters to Mrs. Vernon and arrange that she divorces her notorious husband, naming you as correspondent. It would be a nasty scandal. Your name dragged in the gutters. Think what a splash my papers would make of it. Even you wouldn't do that. It would be your own choice if I do, Joan. I would much prefer to give you the letters tonight. I shan't be here tonight. I think you will, Joan. No, I... Tell your father that you mean to stay. 
That's very sensible, Joan. Give me those letters. Later. And by the way, virtue is sometimes apt to cheat. I've taken the key of your bedroom as a precaution. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Peggy, if you must make love to my secretary, please don't do it in my study. Kenyon, you're fired. Sir, you don't understand. Peggy and I, we wanted to tell you, we want to get married. Well, well, well. And what do you propose to live on? Well, I'm pretty good at my job, sir. Plenty of other people would be glad to have me work for them. Not when they see the character I'll give you. My daughter will not marry a secretary. You think you can run everybody's lives, don't you? Well, you can't run mine. We are married already. You said the only reason I ever married you was that people were beginning to talk. Good evening, Dawson. Good evening, sir. Now get this quite clear. I shall alter my will tomorrow and Peggy will not get another penny from me. You can keep your damned money. This isn't a fortune hunt. Very well, then. The sooner you leave this house, the better. Come on, Peggy. Excuse me. I have one or two things I'd like to discuss with my daughter. Do you mind? This way, sir, please. Very startling, ma'am. Oh, no, oh, dear, no. Just a little cream. A week or so again, they used to being assaulted. Our people are dears, you know, but so impulsive. Anyway, the shock completely cured the king's hiccups, which was naturally a great relief to us all. Yeah, how very remarkable, ma'am. Not that gramophone. Adrian, dear, don't you think that perhaps... Peggy, my dear, your guests don't look very lively. Amuse them. Kenyon will help you. These dance tunes want louder needles if one's to taste real suffering. What would you like to do, Princess? Bridge? Father. The princess wants to play a game. It would be a great treat if we might, Lord Studholm. I get no chance to play after dinner games in my country. They all eat too much. At one time, the young noblemen used to amuse themselves by lifting each other on the ends of billiard cues. But one night, the Grand Duke slipped and broke his cue. The poor Grand Duchess was upset. What game do you want to play, princess? Well, I only played it once. I escaped from the Countess, my chaperone, you know and went to a delightful party in Chelsea with an American. He said I was red-hot stuff. Uh, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> one of the games we played was this one. It's called murder. Can you murder anyone you like, ma'am? Oh, no, General. It's most exciting. We draw lots for who shall be the murderer and who the detective. The murderer must on no account give himself away. He secretly decides who shall be his victim, creeps upon him in the dark, <laughs> murders him, and then gets as far away as he can before the lights go up. Then the detective has to discover the body and track down the murderer. How exciting. If I'm the murderer, I shall strangle my victim. I always use this. Oh, here, I see. Oh, it's only a toy. Oh. Does it go off? <laughs> ah, great! How devastating. <laughs> Let's start at once. Go on, get me some paper. Oh, start home. We shall want Dawson. Certainly. There you are. Adrian, you mustn't excite yourself so. Remember what Dr. Coombe said. Oh, I'm sick of doctors. Nasty, prying creatures. Let me see. 
How many other of us? Eight. Dick Jim. Murderer. Miss Dawson. Take your orders from Mr. Chidiot, will you? Very good, my lord. Oh, Dawson, I want you to go down to where the main switch is. Yes, sir. And then, uh, let me see. I'll strike the gong. Y you ought to hear that, oughtn't you? you? Should do, sir. Well, when you do, turn out all the lights in the house. And then after, let us see, uh, about ten minutes, you turn them all up again. Get the idea? Yes, sir. Is that all, sir? Yes, that's all. Does that mean we play this infernal game in the dark, ma'am? All the nicest games are played in the dark, General. Sir John Holland has just arrived, my lord. The commissioner of police at a murder party? Oh, this is too delicious. He must be the detective. Good evening, Sir John. We're just going to start a new detective game. Oh, really? I've been playing detective games all day. Oh, yes, but this is really thrilling. It's called murder. Oh, oh. I never knew a thrilling murder yet. Oh, you wait. <laughs> ah. Evening, Holland. Good evening, Sir John. Oh, hello, Guy. Hello. Hey, again. Hello, my dear. Hello, dear. All right. Good evening, Sir George. Hello, sir. I think you know Sir John Holland, ma'am. Indeed, I do. Oh, ma'am. Now we draw. They're all blanks, except the one which has murderer on it. No one must give away what he draws, otherwise we shall know who the murderer is. The murderer picks his own victim, and the rest of us dash about trying to spot clues. Never drew a horse in my life. You mustn't say that, you darling old idiot. Hey, oh, sorry. Uh, how do you know it wasn't finesse? <laughs> Oh, no. You're the detective. When the lights go up, it will be your duty to investigate the crime. Yes, sir. And now, Kenyon. And the last one is mine. And now for the gong. My glasses, damnation. I beg your pardon, ma'am. Not at all, General. Most annoying. Don't touch me. It's me, darling. Oh, I'm so sorry, Daddy. Who did you think it was? <laughs> oh, dear, now I've trodden on something. My glasses, I'd better five her. What's the trouble? It's nothing. Please, Joan, don't you trust me? We're friends, aren't we? Stardom. Betty, you remember Howard Vernon? Yes, I remember. Well, I wrote him some rather silly letters. Yes? Stardom's got those letters. He bought them. He says that if I don't let him make love to me, he's going to give them to Mrs. Vernon. Well? Oh, don't you understand, Betty? Adam says he's going to get her to divorce Bernard and name me correspondent. I'll talk to him. Oh, I could kill the beast. Steady, darling, steady. Who's that? I've come to have a little talk with you, Lord Studholm. It's quite simple. You don't like my books, dear, powerful Lord Studholm. You've ruined my career. Every word I've written for the last two years has been abused and ridiculed by your critics under your orders. Talk sense, Chidiot, even if you can't write it. You've eliminated me, dear, powerful, blasted Lord Studholm. And now, don't laugh, I'm going to eliminate you. 
This murder game doesn't amuse me, Chidiot. It isn't a game. I'm in earnest. Terribly. Get out. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you were properly fooled that time, Studholm. You actually believed that I meant it. <laughs> oh, it's that toy of the princesses. <laughs> Damn fool. Get out. <laughs> Well, Kenyon, have you come to murder me too? <laughs> well, I've got to murder somebody. And it might as well be you. Oh, oh damnation! I beg your pardon, ma'am. Lost my glasses. Blind as a bat. Never could see in the, in the dark anyway. How funny now, General. I could all see in the dark. Colonel Bratzer, my husband's equerry, always used to say that I could see better in the dark than any moon he'd ever known. And he had a very wide acquaintance. Guy? Yes? Where were you? I, uh, I've been looking for you. What's the matter? Oh, this game's getting on my nerves. <laughs> that fool chidiot. Guy, do you think Father really will try to stop you getting another job? Don't worry about him anymore, darling. Let's get back in the drawing room. Oh! Oh, General, what are you doing? Looking for something to sit on, ma'am. Take my hand, I'll help you. Help! Come on, everyone, we must find the victim. Don't forget to look for clues, everybody. I have all the clues I want, thank you. No, no, no. Go. You're all under grave suspicion. <laughs> all remain in this room, please. Oh, but we are. Now, let me see. Are we all here? Mm. All except Joan and Lord Studholm. Here is Joan. Ah. Then you can assume that Lord Studholm has been murdered. Come along, Joan. But, uh... I will now make my investigations alone. General, you old rascal, I believe you did the murder and then set in the fire as an alibi. Young man, if I had done the murder, I wouldn't have chosen Studholm. I don't see why Sir John should have all the fun. Why shouldn't we investigate as well? Against orders, ma'am. I'm not going to have my game spoiled by silly rules. Come along, you others. Come along, Mr. Tidiot. <laughs> Let us investigate. No, you, um, you can't speak to him now. Will you call him later, please? Hello? Next stage, I want Whitehall, one, two, one, two. Hello? No, I said Whitehall, one, two, one, two. I want, uh, Sir John Holland speaking. Will you put me through to Inspector Ramage, please? I found him. Here he is. Ramage, I want you to come at once to 44 Grosvenor Square. Bring a doctor with you. Lord Studholm has killed himself. <coughs> oh, dear. That's rather spoiled the game, hasn't it? I'm terribly sorry to have to keep you here. Inspector Ramage is in the study now. Yes, but surely, Daddy, you could let us go. I'm afraid not, my dear. I'm in the same boat as you are. Ramage is in charge. No use pretending anyone's broken-hearted. Man is a rotter. Always has been. But why should the poor man shoot himself? That's what seems so odd to me. Suddenly realized the sort of cad he was, perhaps. Why can't I feel sorry? 
Don't, darling. Don't cry. He did. We're married. Well, I'm blown. Are you sure it was a quarter to ten when you turned the lights on again? About that, sir. Very well, that'll do. Well, Ramage. Now, what do you make of it? Clear case of suicide, Sir John. Dr. Weatherly is making his examination now. He'll be through in a minute. I see. I suppose they can't go until he's finished. I'm afraid not, sir. Look here, Ramage. We must keep Her Highness's name out of this. Oh, I think that can be managed, sir. I can drink, Inspector. Oh, thank you, sir. Sit down, won't you? By the way, sir, is there anyone here likely to be able to identify the gun? I can. It was his own. Yes, Mr. Kenyon was Lord Studholm's secretary. Oh, so you'd seen the revolver before, sir? Oh, yes, he kept it in the drawer of his desk. So many of these big financiers live on the edge of this kind of thing. Uh -huh. Overshot the mark, I expect. Other people's money. Cowards way out. Oh, sorry, Peggy, my dear. You're wrong, Grandfather. He was worth over a million. A million? <laughs> no man ought to have as much money as that. Oh, the power he had. Isn't the doctor a very long time? He won't be long now, Miss Holland. Oh, yes. All right. Oh, good evening, Sir John. Oh, good evening, Doctor. I'd like to see you for a moment, Ramage. What? Are you sure of that? in a minute. Sir John, this is not quite so straightforward as we thought. We'd better have the servants up here. Oh, very well, Ramage. Guy, yeah, do you mind? What's the trouble? Lord Studholm was murdered. What makes the doctor think that? He was shot twice. One shot he could have fired himself. The other was fired from more than six feet away. So, ma'am, I informed your secretary, Baron Tiach, that you were in bed with a chill and had been obliged to cancel your social engagements for the last three days, including Lord Studholm's dinner. Surely, Sir John, that's enough to try the patience of a saint. But you wouldn't wish to be mixed up in this affair, ma'am. Why not? One ought to be prepared to bear one's burdens, if any. Up to now, I've never had a burden. All last night, I was thinking about being sent for by detectives and the third degree and everything. And then that miserable Baron comes round after breakfast and tells me that I wasn't at the party at all. Well, you see, ma'am, we, we wish to keep your name out of this. I'm afraid I was very rude to the Baron. How do you know I didn't shoot the man myself, I said. <laughs> and the silly fellow replied, if you did, all the more reason why you weren't there. But uh, that wasn't what I came to talk about. Now, why am I here? Oh, yes, of course. Sir John, I have a theory. Have you indeed, ma'am? They were all nice people at the party. People who don't do that kind of thing. After all, one can't eat a man's dinner and then shoot him afterwards. That kind of thing isn't done, especially shooting him twice. No, Lord Stadholm must have killed himself. But, ma'am, the doctors have agreed that one of the shots was fired from some distance away. Well, it's perfectly simple. He fired the bullet into his head, threw the pistol away convulsively, causing it to go off and hit him in the ribs. Yeah, but the pistol was found lying by his hand. Oh, then it must have been the other way round. He must have thrown the pistol away, been hit, 
and then fetched it and put himself out of his agony. Yes, now I come to think of it, I'm sure that's what he must have done. But, ma'am, do you think people do that sort of thing? Much? No, only once. <laughs> that's settled then. Goodbye, Sir John. Hi, ma'am. Now, Mrs. Kenyon, I understand you were married secretly, without your father's consent. Yes. Did you tell your father you were married before he died? Yes. When? Last night. Last night? Oh. How did your father receive the news? He was furious with me. That's not an answer to my question, Mrs. Kenyon. What did he actually say? Oh, something silly about cutting me off without a penny. Tell the sergeant, may I number three, will you? Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, give me a copy of the notes. Uh, carry on, Mr. Hamish. And you've no money of your own? No. But you'll inherit all your father's money. I don't know anything about that. Sure. Mr. Kenyon, you're aware that Lord Stadham kept a revolver in the drawer of his desk? Yes. No doubt as his secretary, you had access to that desk? Uh, no. No? No. How did you know the revolver was there? I must have seen it somewhere, I suppose. When Lord Studholm himself had opened the drawer, I suppose. Yes. Why were you in the study when the lights were out? Oh, I was the murderer. Yes, yes, I told you all about that game, uh, Ramage. We, we, we drew lots. Is it necessary to go over all that again? Very good, sir. You needn't take down Sir John's remarks. Oh, no, sir. Oi, right, come back here. Out of my way, ma'am. I have important news for the Commissioner. You can't go in there. Flat-footed oof. All right, Sergeant. Oh, Holland. What do you want? Are you aware that I'm being victimized outrageously at the hands of your minions? Well, what's the trouble? Holland, I'm being watched. Oh, really? As a creative artist, you ought to be used to that. I've never numbered policemen among my fans. Imagine yourself trying to write a vignette with an appalling person leaning against the railings outside your window. It's very unfortunate. I fear it can't be helped. Can't be helped? Have you no authority? I have no authority to treat one man differently from another. Technically, we're all under suspicion. I suppose you're having yourself watched, then. <laughs> I have other witnesses to see, sir. All right, man, I'm just going. Well, I've made my complaint. If my work suffers, I shall put in a claim. Ah, oh, Killian, how are you? But you had that fearful brawl with Studholm last night. You might have come in for some of the money. Oh, of course. <laughs> you married the air, this lucky fellow. She did. You wouldn't mind waiting a few minutes. There are one or two questions I'd like to ask you. Oh, very well. Now, don't misunderstand me. Had you any plans for the future when Lord Stadham discharged you? How could I? I wasn't expecting anything like that. Did you suppose Lord Stadham would be pleased to have you as a son-in-law? Well... You can smoke if you want to, Guy. Have one of these. Uh, no, thanks. Did you know the contents of Lord Stadham's will? No. Obviously, if Lord Stadham accepted you as a son-in-law, your position would have been considerably improved. I married my wife because I love her. Does that mean we can go now? You will be asked to sign the notes when they're transcribed. Thank you, Mrs. Kenyon. General Sir George Pitting, how to see you, Sir John? Uh, take him to my room. I'm coming straight up. Very well, sir. I'll see Chidiot now, sir. I don't envy you. Made an arrest yet, Hallam? No. Good. Never know with you fellows what damn silly mistakes you will make. A lot of decent men and women under suspicion, eh? I'm afraid I can't discuss it, General. Supposed to be damned. I want you to listen to me. Well? You think you know who did it, don't you? I do you? Yes. Worst of you fellows is, they're all silly asses. Look for a bloke with an infernal squint and three days' growth in his chin. Never bother about a member of the Guards Club. I'm your man. <laughs> this is a serious matter, General. Well, who's denying it? What do you take me for, a lunatic? My daughter married that... Well, she married Studholm. And he killed her with kindness. Kindness? Kindness to other women. And Peg was left. See? He started in to break her too. Every rotten humiliation he could put across her. 
I took advantage of that infernal game, and I shot the brute. Did you, General? Did you indeed? Don't worry, Helen. You'll never hang me. I went to see my doctor on Harley Street this morning. He gave me about a month to live. Well, that's bad. Comes to all of us. I've had a good life. I regret nothing. So you're telling me this because you called it your doctor at Harley Street this morning. And he gave you a month to live. Yes. Not because you're afraid of Peggy losing Guy. Well, General. That sounds good enough to me. Is that you, Cunningham? You've been keeping General Pidding, her under observation. Uh, did he visit his doctor in Harley Street this morning? What? Never left the house till he came here. <laughs> Thank you. That's all. Damned incompetence. Interested in firearms, Mr. Chidiot? Oh, passionately. I prefer them to flowers. What was the idea of firing that pistol all over the place? Well, that was to create atmosphere. People were terrified. Did you go into the study by any chance? Heaven knows where I went. The whole place was plunged in inspissated gloom. What gloom, sir? Inspissated. I-N-S. Go down, it was very dark. Very good, sir. Now, tell me all about this quarrel between Studholm and Kenyon. I'm afraid I don't know very much about it, Inspector. When I arrived, Studholm and Kenyon were brawling in the study. But wasn't it his daughter he was quarrelling with? No, Kenyon. What did they say? It had a strong flavour of the novelette. I don't remember their exact words, but the gist of it was... Go, take my daughter. You married her for my fortune, but that you shall never have. Henceforth, she is no child of mine. Tomorrow, I shall disinherit her. Thank you, Mr. Chidiot. That'll be all for the moment. He's a screamer, Chidiot, I did huh. How he ever got off the flypaper beats me. <laughs> Your job has just arrived, sir. I thought you might feel more at home if I questioned her here. Thank you, Ramage. Well, so the case against Kenyon's plain enough? Oh, I don't know. You may find it hard to prove. Well, but look at the facts, sir. Here's a young fellow secretly married to a girl whose father's worth a million. Father gets to hear of the marriage, is furious. Wants to cut the daughter right out of the will. Before he can alter his will, what happens? He's murdered. Yes, but there's no evidence that Kenyon could have known about the will. No damage is not good enough. Look here, sir. May I speak quite frankly? <laughs> All right, go ahead. We recognize you at the yard, sir as a fair-minded gentleman. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I beg your pardon, it beats me what you're trying to get at. Looks as if you didn't want a conviction at all. I don't intend to blunder into a wrong one. Look here, Sir John. Am I to arrest Kenyon? Good morning, Mr. Ramage. Good morning, miss. Do you mind, sir? Oh, no, no, please do, Ramage. Darling, Mr. Ramage is going to ask you a few questions. Keep cool, don't let him worry you. Miss Holland. Do you know anything about this quarrel between Lord Statham and Guy Kenyon? No. By whose invitation were you staying at Grosvenor Square? Peggy Statham's. Which bedroom did you occupy? The large room on the third floor, overlooking the square. Why was the key of that room found on Lord Statham? Well, I don't know what... What do you mean? The key of your bedroom was found in Lord Statham's pocket. Can you tell me why? I can't. He must have had designs on me or something. Hmm. Ramage, about Kenyon, I've been thinking things over. You can arrest him.
please, Mr. Chidiot. I'm not asking your opinion. Did you or did you not hear Kenyon say to Lord Studholm, I've come to murder you? I have the greatest dislike for being scolded and glowered at. Even if the man is cross or upset, I see no reason why he should work off his rancor on me. You may take it, Mr. Chidiot. If there were anything irregular, I would have commented upon it. Oh, very well. To tell the truth, my lord, I thought you were asleep. <laughs> Silence! I find nothing amusing in the witness's remarks. I shall seriously consider having the state of his mind inquired into. Answer the question. Yes. Kenyon said, I've come to murder you. And the reason you didn't break into the study of these words was because you thought it was part of the game. Yes. Thank you. Poor Kenyon. I'm too, too sorry for you. Do not address the prisoner. It is most improper. I bow to your ruling, my lord. But even in court, I fail to see how sympathy can be improper. Be silent. Attend to counsel for the defence. I believe I am right in saying that you told my learned friend that you have been firing blank cartridges all over the house to create atmosphere. Yes. Then you were the only person in the house who was able to distinguish between your toy pistol shots and the actual revolver shots. Yes, I suppose so. Then you must know when the two bullets which killed Lord Studholm were fired. What do you mean? I'm trying to establish the exact time when Lord Studholm was killed. How can you expect me to remember these details with all these people watching me? Let me put it another way. At some time, while the lights were out, you must have heard the report of two revolver shots, which you did not fire yourself. Yes, I believe I did. And will you please try to fix approximately how long before the lights were turned on, those two shots were fired? Three minutes before the lights went up. But then you must have wondered what those shots were. Wonder? My dear man, I'm always wondering. I wonder why I'm here. I wonder why you're asking me so many questions. I wonder why any of us are here. I wonder... Well, that'll do, Mr. Chidiot. Thank you. Hello, William. Now, Miss Holland, I believe you told my learned friend for the Crown that you were going to leave after the dinner party. Yes. Why? My father wanted me to go away with him. He was calling for me. Oh. And during dinner, you told Mrs. Kenyon you were going to stay on, after all. Why did you change your mind again? Now, Miss Holland, I'm going to suggest that there was some understanding between Lord Studholm and yourself. There was none. And can you give any other reason why Lord Studholm was carrying the key to your bedroom? No. I suggest that Lord Studholm tried to make love to you, and that's why you decided to leave. Thereupon he forced you to stay by threatening you with compromising letters which you had written to another man. That's why you decided to stay, and that's why Lord Studholm had the key to your bedroom. No. You deny that Lord Studholm threatened you with compromising letters? There were no compromising letters. Thank you, Miss Holland. Say, what's he driving at? Maybe the girl killed him. Of course. Amaya Shlomiel. He's going to prove she had a motive. Now, Mr. Vernon, did you ever know a Miss Joan Holland, daughter of Sir John Holland? Yes. Intimately? Yes. Did she ever write to you? Yes. Love letters? Yes. A most improper remark. I'm sorry, my lord. Where are those letters? A month ago, Lord Studholm came to me and told me he was acting as Miss Holland's agent. He wanted to buy those letters. You sold them to him? Yes. Do you know where those letters are now? My lord, will you allow me to interrupt this examination? I am now in a position to produce those letters. I have new evidence which might alter the entire complexion of the case. Sir John Holland.
You may stand down. I swear by Almighty God, the evidence I shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If your Lordship pleases, I shall not examine Sir John, but ask him to tell his story in his own way. It was quite dark, so that when I laid my hand on my daughter's shoulder, she thought I was Studholm and cried out. I saw that she was in a very nervous state and I asked her what had happened. At first she refused to tell me, but at last I persuaded her. She told me that Studholm had bought these letters from Vernon and was using them to force his attentions upon her. Just before the lights went up, I made my way into the study by the other door. Kenyon could only just have left. I told Studholm exactly what I thought of him. I was going to give him the thrashing of his life. But before I could get hold of him, he'd drawn a revolver on me. I knocked his arm down, there was a struggle. Suddenly the gun went... I hate liars. Holland, you're a filthy liar. Don't touch me, or I'll shoot you. I should hate to hurt anybody. Now, Holland, tell them that you're lying. You never went near the study. He's trying to spoil my whole plan by lying. He may have wanted to kill Studholm, but he wasn't clever enough. I was. That's very interesting, Mr. Chidiot. May I ask why you killed Lord Studholm? I had to. I'm a creative artist. He was killing my work. I'm sure you'll understand. So when Kenyon had gone, I crept in, grabbed the revolver, and shot him. I hoped that he would be hanged. That was part of the plan. He was just as bad as Studholm. And then this meddling scoundrel comes along with his pack of lies, and you all believed him. I loathe liars. It's a great game. Murder. <laughs> 